late on the afternoon of day three and the match seems like it's slowly slipping away from Australia. We've settled down for a chat at the Lowood and Vos pub with former county cricketer, raw writer and the brother of England bowler Graham, Alex Swan. Alec, in your time in county cricket, you must have faced a few terrifying bowlers. I played against Glenn McGrath when he had a stint at Worcester. And I mean, I didn't score many runs and he didn't get, he didn't get me out though, which I was quite happy about. <laughs> and he just spent 10 overs or half an hour calling me, you know, names that you wouldn't want your mum to hear, really. I don't know why. I mean, he was a, the best bowler in the world. I was a journeyman county cricketer I suppose and every time I missed one or I blocked one back to him out came the profanities the first one generally started with F and the second one generally started with C and I don't know after the game he was a, you know, the nicest bloke in the world and bought you a beer and shook your hand and how are you doing and for half an hour I just thought oh my word what have I done to offend this guy <laughs> and then as I, as I turned out from a, you know, various colleagues and opposition players it didn't matter who he was playing against you know, it could have been me could have been Ricky Ponting could have been Tendulkar he did the same so I thought if there's one moment in my career I've been compared to Ponting and Tendulkar then I'm happy with that <laughs> it was by Glenn McGrath <laughs> it was by Glenn McGrath and so um, I was happy with that <laughs> How do you do, mate? You had a good season? Yes. Half an hour, though. I thought you wanted to stab me or something. What's going on? <laughs> He's as nice as pie. There's, uh, there's the what lesson. A loose cannon. Do not trust Glenn McGrath. That's the lesson in this. Where are we? About, about 20 minutes away from the scheduled close of play. Probably another half an hour beyond that. With some extra time added. England have just gone past 300. The lead's 230-odd. Doesn't look too good from here. For who? Well, for the, <laughs> the people who have this accent, Ellie. <laughs> no, I'd say um, it's definitely, definitely leaning towards England. If I was the Australians, I wouldn't want to be chasing more than 200. I think the pitch has flattened out. I think I'd be wrong, a lot easier than the first couple of days, but I wouldn't want to be chasing 200. Ball spinning, got to face a new ball, perhaps have to face it twice. I wouldn't want to chase more than that. So yesterday it was all about Australia's lower order and the 10th wicket partnership. Today we've seen a lower order partnership between Bell and Broad being immensely important in the whole context of this match. Uh, how big have these last couple of hours been for England? Well, I think when I think it was when Pryor was out, the lead was nothing substantial, 120, 130, something like that. You know, that could easily be whatever it is, all out, Australia chasing 175, all of a sudden they're very, very strong favourites, but it's just dispiriting, I mean, that for England yesterday, all that, even though it's the first innings and a 60 deficit, it's not the end of the world, as they've shown, that's dispiriting when you've just blown everybody away and all of a sudden some bloke at the end who you think should last five yeah. minutes is dragging out, I mean, I know Broad, right. obviously Agar's a better player than that, and Broad's a yeah. better player than someone who just walks in and walks off, Right. but it's still dispiriting, they've worked their way quite nicely through top order yeah. you know, they've got rid of Peterson they got rid of Cook when they were set uh, Bell's played nicely but they've got rid of these main players they got rid of Pryor who's a very dangerous customer then all of a sudden in comes Broad and you're thinking get 10 quickly and get out and we're laughing here sort of thing it can be I think it and having been in plenty of situations in club cricket whatever cricket that is dispiriting when you can't knock the tail over without mm. yeah yeah Broad uh, pushing on towards a half century of his own and Bell is more or less a He's looking at 100 at the moment as well. How, how big is this hitting for Ian Bell? Well, I, I don't know really. I mean, I think he's a settled member of the England side. He's one of, he's definitely one of the best players in this country by a, you know, by a country mile, really. But the last couple of years, his stats have not, not really stacked up to how good a player he is. He's made a few starts and got out in a pretty soft, or tame manner for a player of his ability. So whether there was any pressure on him I'm, I'm not really sure to be honest I mean the, the way England go about their business nowadays is their side's pretty settled they make minimal changes of any generally to the bowling if they think a bowler's not going to suit the Lord's pitch next week for example they might choose a different seamer bowling wise they, oh, sorry batting wise they don't change very often I mean I didn't think Bell was under any pressure whatsoever mm. no not that he was under pressure but there had been some comments like yours earlier that he'd been managing to get himself out you know fairly unlikely ways after promising starts and hadn't made the most of his starts you know today he's really pushed on at a very important time when the team needed him to to try to push them ahead into a substantial lead and he's been able to do that yeah i mean today he's played admirably really he's 
you know, he's got his head down. He's not, you know, like you said, he gets he gets out in an infuriating manner, caught mid off or caught mid wicket. That's not how top batsmen should be getting out, really. I mean, he always reminds me a bit of Mark War. I used to love, I used to love watching him play. Though I don't know if it's because of how easy they can make the game look that when they get out, you think, well, that's a bit soft. Yeah. But is it? That's just the way they play the game. You know, Mark War get 50 or 70, look a million dollars, caught seconds. How's he done that? Right. But he makes the game look easy. That's not that's not a crime, is it? So I think Bell's a little bit the same. He makes the game look pretty simple, and he's a you know not quite an effortless player. Then he gets out, and you think, well, how did you do that? But mm. yeah, that's the manner of his game. But you know, he's got a lot more steel about him than he certainly did have when he came into the side. And today's been a good example on a pretty turgid, slow-scoring wicket that he's put his head down and played pretty nicely. So a lot of people stayed up late last night in Australia watching Ashton Agar score his runs. We were tipping that probably not so many had stayed up late to watch him take a couple of wickets today. But he did take his first two test wickets today, his first wicket being Alistair Cook, the England captain. Not a bad way to start for a 19-year-old spinner. No, not at all. I mean, I've been, for a lad who with very little experience at this first-class level behind him, so young and he went behind the ears, he's, I think he's equipped himself really well. He's, I mean, batting might be a different matter in that he's got nothing to lose batting down there. He can play his shots and see how he goes, but bowling, that's what he's here to do. And I think he's bowled. Yeah, there's a bit of turn there to help him, but it is a slow, pretty unresponsive sort of surface, and I think he's stuck to his task nicely. I think they've found, however they've come about finding Ashton Agar, I think the Aussies have found a, you know, found a pretty decent, you know, de- decent prospect. Good prospect, yeah. You'd think that he's going to need another few years to put into his bowling to really develop to the full level that he could be capable of. But Do you think it's going to put unnecessary pressure on him now to have had all this attention so early in his first test match you know the cricket australia media people were telling us that they've been fielding hundreds of calls all day and all night and he's on the front back pages of all the papers back home possibly possibly whether yeah, it might be in his favor and that a lot of it's not without being i'm not being disrespectful to him at all it's not really cricket specific the, the, the media focus has been where when he was playing in the premier league down south in england last month and who's this bloke and blah, yeah. blah, blah. It's not really based around his cricket. It's just the fact he's come from nowhere. He's doing well. Mm. Yeah, I think he might, for his sake, he might slip under the radar a little bit. And he's bowled nicely today without, if he took six wickets in this innings for 30 or something, all of a sudden then you know, the pressure is you know, right on his shoulders. But yeah. he has. He's bowled nicely without setting the world on fire. You know, if they keep him mm. sort of under wraps a little bit and try and keep him his feet on the ground, I think he'll be, I think he'll be fine. He seems quite a level. Touching by his press conference last night, he seems quite level-headed and pretty down to earth about it all. So I think it'd be all right. Now, your brother Graham took the catch yesterday that got rid of Agar for 98, disappointing everybody in the ground. Are you going to tell him off for the rest of us? Should he have just absolutely well, you know, shelled that one? N- n- no. Well, you say that where I was working yesterday. Um, I write on cricket. So I was watching a county game yesterday, walking around the ground, getting an ice cream, and some fella out of the blue just oh, like um. Your brother should have dropped that catch on Agar just to let him get a hundred. He, um, he probably ruined his day. I thought, well, that's a guy who watches cricket. I'd like to think he knows what he's doing, talking about. What a load of nonsense. That's just, <laughs> <laughs> you know, that's the game. If he'd have palmed it over the rope or... No, no, he shouldn't. And that, <laughs> that's how it is. And I'm sure Ash and Agar wouldn't have done the same thing. My brother, such wood, gets anywhere near to a century and he palms on over the boundary then more for him are you hopeful that he might get to that hundred <laughs> eventually i'd like to think so and i'm sure if i asked him the question tonight he'd tell me yeah i'm not far away from that but yeah yeah one day one day he's got it in his sights <laughs> well i think he has <laughs> he's perhaps a little gung-ho in his approach to him there was a, a little bit of criticism of Graham for celebrating over exuberantly, but Ashton Agar said in the press conference last night that Graham also ran up to him and shook his hand as he went off and congratulated him for his innings. So it seemed like a sporting gesture. Yeah, I, th- I think my brother probably recognised a kindred spirit in '98. What should you really do? Tap a couple of singles to the deep fielders to get that hundred? No boundary. And my brother plays exactly like that. And I think he'd appreciate the fact that the lads tried to get there with a into the stand, so that, that's probably what it was congratulating, no doubt. Over the manner, deep mid Over the manner of how he tried to get to his 100. <laughs> but, well, regardless, it was a, an astonishing effort by that lad, and you know, good on him, really. 
Now, Australia has been well in this game up until probably the last couple of hours of play this day. It's certainly been very tight, it's been close, it's been evenly balanced. Now things just starting to slip out of control. Are you confident that England's going to be able to wrap it up from here? I'd like to think so. You know, I, I, I thought if Australia had to chase 200, yeah, that'd be hard push. 250 might struggle. They're chasing 300 plus. You know, I, I could be proved completely wrong. And the pitch has seemed reasonably flat today. It's turning a bit, but not doing anything untoward for the seam bowlers. I think to get anywhere near, like you said, there's a history of chasing it. It's not particularly good. If they get anywhere near that, excuse me, I'll be amazed. I think it's sort of gone to form eventually that England are coming to the game as favourites. And it's played out to form so far, you know, if you take the whole game in the, as opposed to just a day or so, I think England should win from here. Do you think that might be a bit of a predictor for the series, that Australia will challenge and be there and thereabouts for a while, but eventually England's greater versatility and greater team depth will well, as an English, take its toll? As an English sort of follower, I'd like to think so. I mean, I think England are a stronger side. Definitely in the pattern. I think the Australian bowling looks pretty, uh, pretty useful actually. I think England are a far stronger batting side. And, and I think too many people before it's, a, it's an English thing. Australians are struggling. We'll beat them comfortably. No, they won't. Australia are a far better side than they're given credit for. You know, the competitive nature of the Australian sportsman is, you know, lends itself to however poor a side they turn up with. They're not going to be easy beats by any means. I think just the way they played over those first couple of days showed that, you know, 120 for nine or whatever it was yesterday morning, that could have been 130 all out. All of a sudden, you're chasing 450 with no chance at all. They didn't lie down. They got stuck into the game, and, and I, I, I think it might be. I can easily see Australia winning one of these Test matches, no problem. But I think England will come. I think they'll play to the form, but England will come out on top in the long run. And what are your odds on an Ashton Agar century in the second innings to see Australia home in the chase? <laughs> Well, a few, um, oh man, I get some emails from bookmakers, various cricket odds and his odds, I don't think no one knew who he was before he turned up, and all of a sudden his odds to get another half century in the series are quite yeah, quite attractive, and to get a hundred are very attractive. Um, I'd like to think that it, he's better than a number 11, he can't bat there all his career, and I think in the future you'll see him scoring a few more, but 100 in the second innings. <laughs> Uh, a bitter realist shattering Australian <laughs> dreams. That's Alex Swan talking to me here at the Larwood and Vos Tavern at Trent Bridge Cricket Ground.